Hey, this is chapter 9.4, and this is our third conic section. We're going to be covering ellipses. So an ellipse is a stretched out circle, or an oval, as you might have learned in geometry, and it has the basic equation of x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. And the main difference between this and that of the circle equation is the denominators of our two x and y values. So we have a and b as different constants. So for example, we could have x squared over 3 squared plus y squared over 4 squared equals 1. And this is how we would know that this is in fact an ellipse and not a circle. So when looking at what I've labeled on our graph, first of all, c is our distance from the center to the focus. So we have a c value here and a c value here because we have two foci. Now b is the distance from the center to the co-vertex as the book says which is so these are the vertices and they lie on the major axis whereas the co-vertices lie on the minor axis which is the axis that goes through the small I like to think of it as the smaller um, side so like there's less distance between the two sides of the ellipse here, whereas there's more distance here. So this is the major axis and the minor axis. So once again, B is a distance from the center to the co-vertex. And finally, A is a distance from the center to each of the vertices. Now we can also have a vertical ellipse in which our major axis is the y-axis if it's centered at 0, 0. And that's just a general sketch to give you the idea. But we still have the same A, B, and C values corresponding to the same foci, vertex, and co-vertex. So in a problem, we're going to be told to graph 4x squared plus 25y squared equals 100. And additionally, we're also told to identify the vertices in the foci. So our first step is to write this equation in standard form. So standard form. So we can take this equation and divide everything by 100. And now we have x squared over 25 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. So now that we have our equation here, we can analyze it to see what it tells us about our ellipse. So we can see that the denominator of our x value is greater than that of the y value because we have 25 and 4. Therefore, we know that the y term, excuse me, therefore we know that this is, has a horizontal major axis. So generally, this will look like this. Now next, we can see that a is 5. This will give us our a value, and the square root of 25 is 5. Next, b is 2, because the square root of 4 is 2. Therefore, our a value will tell us what our vertices are. So we have plus or minus 5, 0. And then our b will tell us what our distance to our co-vertices are. So we have 0 plus or minus b, which is 0 plus or minus 2. Now we need to find c, which is our distance from the center to the foci, by using the Pythagorean theorem. So we have c squared equals a squared minus b squared. And this is because if we have a we have an ellipse and we can create a right triangle within the ellipse in which our a value is the hypotenuse and b and c are legs. So we have a right triangle here. Therefore we can use the Pythagorean theorem as I was saying to find out what our c is and therefore find out where our foci are. So when we solve this, we have c squared equals 
5 squared minus 2 squared. So c equals root 21. So we've graphed our ellipse and we can identify our vertices. So at 5, 0 and negative 5, 0, we have our covertices at 0, 2 and 0, negative 2. And our foci are at root 21, which is approximately 4.5. So we have our foci at negative 4.50 and 4.50.